Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shireen Idris. So get your pens and papers out because it is Saturday morning. And if you know what's good for you, it's Pillow Talk Derm time. In honor of being a glorified pimple popper, AKA board certified dermatologist, and it being Acne Awareness Month, today we're gonna cover the top five over-the-counter ingredients that you need if you have acne, breakouts, blemishes, oily skins, blackheads, whiteheads, you name it. This video is for you so that you can empower yourself to really understand what you're using in your routine to have clearer skin in the process. So without further ado, subscribe to this video, like it, and comment below to let me know what it is you want to learn more about next week. Starting with number one, retinols. You may be rolling your eyes like really groundbreaking florals for spring, but retinols are one of the best ingredients that we have in our toolbox that you need to understand what it does, what it stands for, they're not all created equal, and how to incorporate it in your routine in order to get the best results. Retinols are a class of vitamin A derivatives that were discovered in 1971 by Dr. Albert Clickman at the University of Pennsylvania. The guy was smart. And he realized that the vitamin A derivatives can really help with acne production. With that being said, it was only until 1975 that the FDA approved retinols for acne. So it's been around for quite some time now and everything great was once new, but not everything new is great. So if this ingredient has such a long track record, there must be some truth to it. How exactly retinols work or retinoids work are four ways. And I just confused you and I'm going to get into that in a second. There are four main benefits here. Number one, they unclog pores by regulating how your cells turn over. Number two, they have anti-inflammatory effects that can calm the look of redness and the angry looking aspect of your skin, which is counterintuitive because they are notoriously irritating, but we'll get into that in just a second. Number three, they help with oil production, controlling it. So you're not constantly an oil ball walking around, unable to hold on to your skincare products or makeup during the day. And number four, and this is one that has the most myths around it. They do not thin out your skin. They actually help to promote healthier skin in the process by supporting the fibroblasts to produce more collagen so your skin can be smoother, thicker, and more even over time. So retinols offer a lot of benefit, but the reason why you're confused is because myself included, and a lot of the people out there refer to them all as retinols, when retinols only make a subset of this class. The class itself is known as retinoids, which are all vitamin A derivatives. And the real active of the retinoids is retinoic acid, which is also known as tretinoin or retin-A, it's prescription. But over the counter, it's available at different strengths that get converted in order to turn into the prescription, starting with retinol esters. Retinol esters are the weakest of the all the retinoids because it needs to get converted into retinols, then retinols, then retinoic acid. So it has several steps to go before it can actually make a difference in your skin. But that being said, consistency, using them over and over every single day is gonna give you results over time. Trust me. One of the cult products out there are or is rather A313 by the French. This is a combination of three different types of retinol esters, including retinol palmitate, retinol acetate, and retinol propionate. It is very light, but do not be fooled. It does give an instant sort of glow the next day where your skin just feels tight and beautiful, but it can also be itchy when you apply it. Do not ask me why. To this day, I still get itchy every now and then. But this is the A313. It is a beautiful gel-like texture that goes on to your skin. Word to the wise, never use any sort of retinoid around this area because you will shed like a snake. Been there, I still can't tolerate it. It is what it is. After retinol esters, we have retinols, which is what you're used to hearing because people like me confuse you and everything is called a retinol. Retinols need now two steps in order to turn into retinoic acid. They go from retinol to retinal to retinoic acid. So they need to get converted in order to become active. They are available over the counter. If you are a beginner and you're looking for a nice basic retinol to include at night in your routine, it is this one by L'Oreal. I do hate the fact that it comes in a dropper and it is quite runny. 
but you do not need more than this much for your full face. If you want to be adventurous, you could use this on your neck only after you have moisturized because you want to buffer the retinol so that it doesn't irritate your neck. And again, you start maybe two times a week at night for a few weeks and every week you add a night working your way up so that one day you can tolerate it every night. Now there's also SkinCeuticals, which I do not have on me, that comes in a tube, which I much prefer the application of, and it comes in three different strengths, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 1.0, so you can titrate how strong you want to go with it. Now after retinols, we have retinals, which just need one step to get converted into retinoic acids, which is the prescription again. Aven has their Retronal 0.1 that comes in a pump, which I love. All you need for your full face is just this much. It is a little bit pricey at around, I believe, $74, but it will last you a long time if you use it correctly and in the right amounts. But this is stronger than the over-the-counter retinols. Now, very recently, a new class has been recently discovered. You may have heard of it, known as Granactive Retinoids, and this has been the ordinary's claim to fame. Granactive retinoids are a class of retinoic acid, i.e. the prescription, ester. So it's a cousin of the prescription. It's stronger than all that I've mentioned, and it works faster because it automatically works within your cell, but it is less irritating. So it is an interesting one to try if you've never been able to tolerate a retinol or a retinal or a retinol ester, you may be able to tolerate this one. Ordinary has their Grand Active Retinoid. Of late, Caroline Hirons came up with Skin Rocks Retinoid 1 and 2. Retinoid 1 is lighter with that 0.2% hydroxypinicolone retinoate. Retinol 2 has 0.5% hydroxypinicolone retinoate. It makes for a stronger product. And then before we get into the prescription of retinoic acid, there is a cousin, a synthetic derivative, also known as adapalene, aka different, which is available now over the counter in the US. This one is a very strong one. So do not use it foolishly because it is very strong. But if you're using it to get anti-aging benefits, you're not going to get as good of a result because it only targets two out of the three receptors that retinoic acids actually get to. So it's better geared for people with acne, blackheads, whiteheads, not so great for anti-aging effects long-term. And last, retinoic acid, our prescription, our holy grail, et voila. Now you understand everything you need to know about retinols and why they're so important. Second ingredient over the counter that you must incorporate in your routine are benzoyl or is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide was discovered in 1965 by a researcher named Norman Pace who published in the journal Nature showing that benzoyl peroxide had effects in killing bacteria, especially the bacteria that causes acne. And five years later, the FDA approved it for use for acne. It is a bacteriocidal that kills P. acnes, also known as Propionobacterium acnes, involved in the formation of acne. So it reduces the number of breakouts. It helps to unclog pores by going in deep and breaking down the skin cells within your pores. And it has anti-inflammatory properties when used correctly. The downside of benzoyl peroxide is that it can bleach the shit out of your clothes and your towels. So be careful how you use it. If you have white bed sheets, knock yourself out. If you like colored bed sheets, which I personally hate, I would avoid and use cautiously. It comes in the form of cleansers, gels, lotions, creams, you name it. And interesting tidbit, or titbit, tidbit. <laughs> I have a list because of my retainer. More is not better. It's as effective as 5% as it is at 10%. So don't be fooled thinking you're getting more bang out of your buck with a higher percentage. One of the ones I love to recommend are Penoxyl. And with that said, this is the highest that you'll probably find over the counter at 10%, not that it matters. The way I recommend using this is applying it to a clean face, letting it sit for five minutes, and then jumping into the shower, preferably while you're naked so that you do not bleach your clothes. And this way it minimizes any impact that it may have on your towels. Now, if your acne is mild and not so severe and you get one or two blemishes, La Roche-Posay has their Effaclar Duo, which comes as a spot treatment. So you can literally just put it on your acne spots and leave it on overnight. Again, make sure your bed sheets are white or else you will have some stains and not the fun kinds of stains. <laughs> 
happy Saturday. So that is benzoyl peroxide. Moving on, sal acid is our third ingredient that you need to incorporate in your skincare routine. It was discovered in 1828 by a German chemist, Johann Buchner, who extracted salicylin from a willow bark tree. And 10 years later, an Italian chemist, Raffaele Pirilla, converted salicylin into salicylic acid. And then in 1897, another German chemist, took salicylic acid and made it into acetyl salicylic acid, AKA aspirin, which was made by the Bayer company. So it's been around for many years, but it wasn't until 1937, I believe, so a hundred years or so later, that the FDA decided to approve it for acne. It was originally, interestingly, approved as a wart remover, but it was soon found to be effective in treating acne as well. So it's good for your face and for the warts among us. So sal acid is great. It's a beta hydroxy acid. It is a chemical exfoliant. It's gonna help buff your skin, especially if you have oily skin, because it can go deep into your pores, clear out the inner parts of your pores, and really help correct how you make oil while exfoliating the crap out of your face. But a lot of people misuse it, and we're gonna talk about my beef with that. You do not need to be using it twice a day. My personal preference is that you use it at night after washing your face so that you have a fresh base and you allow it to work on a clean slate. And that's why I like this tried and true Paula's Choice 2% BHA quote unquote toner, even though toner makes no, it doesn't mean anything. It just means it's a salicylic acid exfoliant. It's $22. Some people, however, would much rather use it during the day which I can understand because they're very oily and they use it to help regulate their oil production. If you're gonna use it during the day, do not use it at night because you're gonna be way overdoing it, inflaming your skin barrier in the process and counterintuitively potentially becoming oilier. But if you're gonna use it during the day, and I can't stop you, SkinCeuticals has their Silymarin CF, which is 0.5% sal acid. It's much lighter than a 2% salicylic acid, and it's combined with ascorbic acid and ferulic acid, so you can use this underneath your sunscreen. If you are somebody who wears a lot of makeup and you don't want your makeup swimming over your face because you get so oily during the day, Jory Skin has their oil control primer, which is a 2% salicylic acid primer that you can use underneath makeup. And if you just have pimples that you want to put salicylic on, salicylic acid on, or blackheads because you're trying to exfoliate those tiny spots, Skin Fix has it in the form of a spot treatment. So you can literally just put this guy on your spots, okay? Just like that. So that is sal acid in a nutshell. Changing gears to number four, azelaic acid. Azelaic acid was discovered in 1900 by Ferdinand Neuberg, a German chemist who isolated it from a wheat. And then it was also realized to be produced by a yeast known as Malassezia fervor, what also causes tinea versicolor on certain people. Some people have these white patches on their chest and their back, especially as it gets sunnier. That is caused by this yeast that also makes azelaic acid. The fascinating connection here is that azelaic acid also helps control pigment production. It helps with hyperpigmentation. And that's why when people have the yeast on their skin, they have white spots. Light bulb. Insane how science works. And that's why I just love it. It has antimicrobial action, believe it or not. It can help minimize acne breakouts. So people who usually have tinea versicolor on their chest or back don't really have a lot of acne, interestingly. And it normalizes cellular turnover. It reduces the look of hyperpigmentation as well as sebum regulation. So azelaic acid is a great one. It's a BITCH to formulate, and that's why you usually find it on its own. Paula's Choice has her 10% azelaic acid booster. Doesn't smell great, but it's not meant to smell great. If you can't tolerate it, just use it at night. Don't use it during the day underneath makeup because it will pill. Um, peach slices is a recommendation from all of you. This one is relatively cheap i believe it retails for 20 bucks and you guys it is a nice formula it is creamier and thinner than paula's counterpart and then the ordinary has their azelaic acid suspension at 10 percent again use it at night not during the day it's going to pill underneath your makeup and you're going to be annoyed 20 minutes after applying it and last number five we have sulfur 
a tried and true. This one has been around for centuries. It was discovered by the Egyptians and then the Greeks and the Romans used it. And then in the 19th century, it was literally everywhere over the counter as an acne treatment. But it fell out of favor in the 20th century when newer and greater products like benzoyl and peroxide and salicylic acid came on the market. However, it shouldn't be dismissed. It is a great ingredient that inhibits the growth of certain bacteria and fungus on your skin. It has anti-inflammatory effects, so it will calm the redness, it will break down excess keratin formation, and it regulates your sebum. It is great if you have rosacea because it is the one thing that will make you look less red in the long run, but you will lose your significant other while you use it because you will smell like a rotten egg. Everything has pros and cons in life. De La Cruz is one of those that you should not sleep on. It is available over the counter. It is cheap for five, six, seven bucks. It comes in a thick paste. I used it last night on a pimple that I had forming on my nose. It is pretty not visible anymore today. And it really does help regulate oil and redness. This is a nice one. If you want to have something that is easier to carry around that doesn't smell so bad, In Beauty Project has their pimple paste, which contains sulfur in it as well as zinc that you can put on your blemishes. So if you are rosacea prone, this might be an interesting one for you to look at as well. So there you guys have it, the top five ingredients for acne control that you must look into that are available over the counter that you can easily use to help yourself. And I hope you've watched this video and you feel empowered and ready to tackle your blemishes, your acne, your whiteheads, your blackheads, and your oily skin. I am Dr. Shireen Idris. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend and Saturday, and I will catch you guys next week.